Hi, welcome to another video. So today I'm looking at bootloaders. So this device here, just over one pound from China via eBay. This is the FTDI 232, sort of RS-232 to USB. And this is the cheaper one without the oscillator. It's just got a transmit and receive LED, couple of capacitors, and that's it. So five volts USB in, and you can have 3.3 or 5 volts out. So that's my supply coming out on the brown and black, and my UART on the green and blue. Well, I turn it over, I've got various connections. I'm only using the ground power transmit receive, and like all UART devices, the transmit goes to receive on the UART, and the receive goes to transmit on the microcontroller. So you can see I'm not using these DTR and CTS pins. The 3.3 volts is linked here in the middle. If you want 5 volts out, cut the link in here and join the middle to the 5 volts. Right, so this was an old project. It's actually a GLCD clock made years ago. And if you've seen my linear rail video I did a few months ago, this is the stepper motor driver I've stuck in the back of the clock. This is a PIC 18F46K22. It's got real-time clock calendar, battery backup, that's a blue GLCD display, and this one picks up the time by MSF in Cumbria, Hanthorne. So it did have switches to adjust the time and date, that sort of stuff, but now it picks up the MSF self-adjusting. So this device is for the bootloader, while the UART transmit and receive to the UART transmit and receive on this microcontroller. It's running on an 8 megahertz resonator. That's important, I'll show you later. I've actually got 12 volts in, there's a 5 volt regulator buried behind this capacitor. So 12 volts in, 5 volts for the clock and 12 volts for the stepper motor. So some of you will be familiar and some of you won't. Why do you specifically need a bootloader? So I made one of these clocks for my brother, and his has got various counters for the amount of uh, marathons he does, that sort of stuff. I sent him the clock. There isn't an MSF transmitter or DSF transmitter in Australia. Sent him the unit, and I wanted to make a few changes. So up until now, I've had to send him another chip programmed with the updates. Put a bootloader on. I could just amend the file here, send him the hex code, he can plug it into a regular computer, just download the bootloader software from Microelectronica, and he's away. So obviously once you've got the bootloader programmed into the microcontroller, just use a regular PC to program it. And I'll show you how it's done. So just a quick update, because I gave away my EasyPick version 7 development board, I, I did that because I had this ME Labs programmer, ME Labs, Micro Engineering Labs, and I used to use their PIC Basic Pro. This programmer is actually more expensive than the PIC Kit 2 and PIC Kit 3, so I don't know why I bought it, but I did. It's a good programmer, but only works for the 8 bit devices. Got it wired to a little header there, so over the years the wires are broken, so excuse that. I'm going to plug this onto this clock and show you how to program. So I'll just show you, that's the, uh, the clock working. I've got it in the Perspex housing, which I had engraved many years ago. Right, so I've got my Micro Engineering Labs programmer connected via five pins, although this has actually got six for another device, but five pins in circuit serial programming. If you're not familiar, ask a question or look at my other videos. So program data, program clock, ground, power, and master clear. Right, this is Microelectronica's Micro C Pro for PIC. If you're new to them, new to their software, Go open examples, 
other bootloader and then there's various bootloader examples here so this was the one I had been using BIC 18F45 code 22 as I say that's got 34 kilobytes of program memory space so 32, 34 and you've got PIC 16 so look the common 877 and 887 which is actually superior to that open their 18F45K22 bootloader so a bit of text tells you about the bootloader 18F45K22 32 megahertz is the clock speed it says high speed PLL so it runs on an 8 meg crystal and the 4 times phase lock loop multiplier is running so 4 times 8 32 megs now that can cause problems depending on what your actual program you're going to load or boot up with runs on. Now this PLL can, was causing me problems. My clock runs 8 megs and no PLL. I disabled the PLL in my program. You look PLL enable bit is 0. That turns off the PLL and my clock was still running fast. So what I've done, I've altered this program and I'll show you what I've done. So first of all, so we've got the 46K22 and it's running at 8 megs. And go to the device settings at the top, edit project here. I've turned the PLL off, so look it's disabled. That's important. In case you're having problems, maybe it's something you can look at. But by turning the PLL off, I can't get the maximum transmit and receive speed on the UART. Right, this program org all or pragma org all is you want the program to appear at this address or after. That's what that means. Then down here, bootloader start address and the start program address. Right, in case you're not familiar with bootloaders, I'll start at the beginning just to give you the heads up. So I've opened Micro Engineering Labs Programmer, set it to pick 18F46K22. So if I read the chip, read the microcontroller. Now I haven't secured this code, so I'll be able to see it in this block over here. Right, that's finished. So that's the 64K of program space. Now ordinarily, so this is the beginning, and if I scroll all the way down, you can see all these FFFF, that's all empty. That's program. And so this is the bottom of the program. So I said the 46K22 is about, what do I say, 64 megs. So if we pull up win Windows Calculator, right, Windows Calculator, and if you're not familiar, haven't seen my other videos, go to View, down to Programmer. Right, so this is the bottom of my 46K22, so FFF0. That's this line, but obviously you've got these bytes here. So hexadecimal FFF0, beginning of this line. Go to decimal. We've got 65,520. So that's effectively 64, they call it 64 kilobytes of program space. On the 45k22, we'd only have 32 here. So back to hexadecimal. So hopefully you understand that. Now at the beginning, the first program space, 000. zero, zero. So this is 8 bits, 8 bits, 8, 8, 8, 8. The program would normally start somewhere here and then just run down. So when running in the bootloader, instead of the device starting at 0, 0 and then just running down sequentially, 
points to an address in the memory map, reads the program, that would be the bootloader. It read the bootloader program, look for communication to the PC. If it doesn't see any, it will then jump to the program. Right, I've loaded the bootloader software. And you'll see here, there's a couple of opcodes here. This EF and F0. But you can see, rather than start, look, 0010 then 0020 you see it's going to write the program to F968 so if we pull up the calculator again oh, hexadecimal F968 so F968 convert that to decimal but you can see we're writing near the end of the 64, 65 kilobytes of program space. So I've picked a number, a random number, near the end of the memory and said, right, we'll put the code there. And the opcodes will jump to that program. Well, what I'll do is program this bootloader into the 46K22. So I've loaded it up, program. So it's going to write this software into the microcontroller. You see that was the beginning of the memory space and then we're jumping right down to near the end. So now it's programmed. It's not code protected so I can go and have a look at it. On this one I'll just go read. There we go. So that's the beginning. We've got opcodes here to tell it to, get, to go and find the program down the bottom. So this is all empty, you can see. It's just a small bit here to tell it to go and find the program elsewhere. So now it's going to take forever because it's 64 kilobytes. So I'll drag this down. Remember, if I bring up the software, I told it to start at F968. Come on up. So if I go down to F, C, D, F. There we go. F960 is here, this first line, and F968 here so we're nearly at the end if I scroll down right that's the bottom of the memory space so I could probably shift it all down a small bit but so that's the bootloader software just there F968 and that's the little function to tell it where to go so that's the bootloader, you can see down near the bottom of the program. So we're just up 20 or 30 lines, so you know, I could put the program sort of here for example. You've obviously got to allow enough space for the program. But I just, as I say, picked a number, put it there, and that's it. But you can see I've still got all this empty memory space. And I know this clock program is only going to take up probably a third of this. So that's the programmed bootloader. Close it I can close it down, don't need this program anymore. So back to Microelectronics program. Remember this was for the 18F45K22, 32K of memory space. I've now got it set up for the 46K22. Disabled PLL. Right, the text in green is the original and the purple defines a mine. So you can see that's the Pragma OG or 7968 I showed you in the programmer. Bootloader start address and the start program address just a small bit after about 398 bytes after this address. So writing 64 bytes in every block. 
So a lot of this you'll be able to figure out for yourself. So this is looking for the communication. What I'll do, I'll run through this difficult bit and then let you figure out the rest for yourself. It's quite easy, just reading and writing bits of the UART, X's and Y's. And a communication there again. So start bootloader. If there's no response, start program. So this is a confusing bit to some people. This flash arrays. So I'll put some notes in there for you to understand. So these are opcodes. The EF and the F0 I showed you in the program software and these two bits block 0 and block 2 address high byte address low byte so because the program clock shifts the program to the left you have to take the start address which in this case is F968 and divide that by 2 so for example, if you wanted the program to start at 8000, down here, this address would be equivalent to 4000. And as I say, the program counter is going to shift it left one place, same as multiplying it by 2. So if we take this 7CB4, pull up the calculator again. Right, so high byte, low byte, 7CB4, Windows calculator, program review, convert that to decimal. You can see it's half the value we're expecting. So 31,000 instead of 64,000 or 63,000. Back to hex. Multiply it by 2. So mod times 2 equals F968. Back up the top, F968. So I just picked an address which was near the bottom of the memory and divided it by two. So F968, and it works both ways obviously, divide by two equals 70B4. 7C B4. So hopefully give you an idea using this program on, on the 18 series microcontrollers. Right, so I've got my 232 device plugged into the USB. I'm having trouble because my battery is running flat on this camera. So what I'll do, show activity here. You'll see the X's and Y's are being written to the microcontroller. So if I go disconnect, so you set on here, I'm on COM8, 38,400 board rate, click connect. That's waiting for me to hit the reset on the microcontroller. It's now connected. So browse for the hex. So that's the bootloader and that's the uh, black clock blue GLCD and solar panel control. So that's the hex file. And now I'll begin upload. And because I've slowed it down from 115,000 to 38,400, it's gonna take a minute or two to upload that big file. So I'll probably stop this camera and come back when it's nearly finished. Oh, so if we look at the time, so that's the time in Australia, nearly five to five in the morning. So that's the time now, we'll come back in a minute, or 19.54 here. So that's the time in Australia, nearly five to five. Right, so about three minutes in roughly and we're nearly done. You can see the UART transmitting receiving down there. So as I say, one pound from China.
this FTDI chip from Farnell here in the UK is over three pound. Yeah, you know, I can get that chip and the board from China for a pound. The chip's probably fake, but maybe it's not. Maybe it is. So you can see the X's and Y's being written there. There we go, it's so about four and a half minutes with it slowed down. Obviously I can't be bothered to sort out my clock and why the my clock's running on the high speed PLL when I've disabled it. I could define the clock and everything on it, but I couldn't be bothered. I thought now I've got four minutes to wait program off the PC and my intention is my intention is with the system my brother's got have him send it back or something off at the bootloader and then I can update his clock make changes do anything right so the moment of truth a bit dark over here but so that's the stepper motor wiring. Plugs into the stepper motor driver. If you're not familiar with that, have a look at my other videos. In particular, the linear rail I've done a month ago. Pop the power on. Remember, it takes five seconds looking for communication to the PC. And there we go. Didn't find communication with the PC, so started the program. This was glued on, but I snapped it off to add the bootloader. So the light's actually a bit too bright for this camera, but this does dim down at night. Actually, it dims down at 8 o'clock, but because it wasn't plugged in, it's not going to dim down anymore to 9 o'clock. But So that's how to set up a bootloader on a PIG 18F46K22. Hopefully you found this helpful. Thank you very much.